Glasses, no glasses. Glasses, no glasses. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is gonna be a nice, short, inside the room video. I am packing up for a trip I have tomorrow. I'm going to Los Angeles. So while I was getting all my camera gear together, I decided to make a what's in my camera bag video. So my very first camera bag is what came with my A6000 when I bought it. It's this small little Sony bag. Really not the biggest fan of it because it just felt very small, kind of like a purse. As you look inside, there's really not that much space in here. I was able to fit my camera body, my kit lens, uh, my long telephoto lens, and then maybe a couple other things in there. But after getting my new lenses, there was no way I could fit all my gear inside this bag comfortably. Actually, no way I could fit it in at all. I finally decided to ditch this bag, and I bought a new one. I have the Low Pro Flipside 300 AW2 right here. Way bigger, I know. I love it. So obviously I have my tripod strapped to my bag right here, which would be great for while we're hiking up the mountains in LA. Most bags you're able to get in with like a slot right here, or you open up the top and pull your camera out. The only way to open this bag is through these straps right here. So this is on your back. Strip these down, and then you lift it up. And then there's all your gear right there. Obviously this isn't all my gear because I'm obviously filming on a lens and a camera and a stand and all that right now. But uh, let's go ahead and start just opening the bag and see what I have. So my camera body hasn't changed. You've seen it in videos prior. It's still the A6000. I still wish I had a camera that had a mic input, had a flip screen so I could see myself besides me just having to sit down, frame it, get behind the camera, view it. Anyway. My first lens is my kit lens. It's a 16 to 50. It just came with the camera. It's a nice wide range, very compact lens. It's really not that big at all. What I do like about it is that, yes, it compacts very small, uh, which is great for travel, which is why I was able to go on with this for so long, just simply due to packing in my old bag. My new bag, it's not really an issue. The downside to this lens is that it's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture range. Essentially, 3.5 to 5.6 means this lens is not good in low light. My next lens is my 55 to 210. This is also essentially a kit lens since Sony does offer more high-end telephoto lenses. This is a lens that came with my kit lens when I bought this whole package together in 2017. I greatly love it. It's obviously from 16 to 50 with my old lens, and then 55 to 210 covers all the ranges you really need. I use this lens for a lot in terms of just that extra reach. So I've been to a couple baseball games around the country, and when I go to those games, I try to get as close as possible, get this lens out and just take those pictures. But I always have to carry this with me. I just never know when I'm gonna need that extra reach beyond 50 millimeters. My next lens is the first lens that I've ever purchased outside of my kit. It is my Sony 50mm 1.8, otherwise known as the Nifty 50. I didn't really have a desire to buy this lens at first. I was more torn between getting the 50mm or the 35mm. The only difference is was price. This lens retails for about $200, $225, depends on where you get it from. I bought it off Facebook Marketplace from this guy in Toledo for $100. So when I was on my way to New York and I filmed that train sequence, the reason why when I filmed on that ticket, things got really out of focus, because of this bad boy. This is my first prime lens. Prime lens means that it doesn't move. It's always 50 millimeters. It's never any more or any less. But it's a 1.8 aperture, which is great in low light. My next lens is a lens I got this year that I'm really excited about. It is my 10 to 18 millimeter lens. So this lens comes like this at 18 millimeters, and then when you go out to 10, it actually raises up a little bit. It's a constant f4 aperture. It's not that great in low light, but 10 to 18, when I go to LA, there's gonna be a lot of shots where I do film out at 10 when I'm on those mountain ranges. Uh, it's a really wide view. Actually, let's just, let's just switch it out and see what it looks like to 10. So this is the 10 to 18 lens. This is at 18 millimeters, which is a little bit tighter than my other lens I was shooting on. But for 10, there's 10. You're seeing a lot more of my room than I want you to see because it's probably not well made. So let's close it back. And while this lens is off the camera body, my newest lens is the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. This is my first third party lens. It works great. The autofocus 
is a little loud. So if it were to be a quiet room and maybe a talking headshot like this, you might be able to hear the autofocus mechanisms in here just moving around. Both of these lenses shoot at 16 millimeters at the widest end, but this is a prime, just like my 50 millimeter, it does not expand anymore. No less, no more. Due to that 1.4 aperture being the fastest lens that I own, that's why it's so hefty. And as you can see, it pretty much takes up the majority of the size of my hand. The good thing about this lens is it's minimal focusing distance, which means that I can put this camera, this lens cap really close and it'll focus. Actually, I don't know if it focused because I don't have a flip screen. So those are all my lenses that I currently have. I do want some more. First off, I want Sony to release more lenses, more fast lenses, so like a 16 to 50 2.8. That would be ideal. Or a 10 to 18 2.8 instead of a 10 to 18 f4, which is this one. The current lenses that are available now, the only other lens I really want is the 35 1.8. It's also a prime. And then the Sony 18 to 105. It's a nice wide zoom range, also a constant f4, but it's also a lens that I can easily ditch some of these lenses at home and just take that with me, even though it's a lot heftier than my camera body itself. All right, let's see what else do I have in my camera bag. I have a nice little $40 aperture light. It's one that Peter McKinnon advertised a lot last year, so I bought it. It was only 40 bucks. Uh, it's very bright. I'm actually using it over here, but this is the form factor that it has, nice and compact. And I have this. This is just an air blower like you would use up a baby stump. Oh, okay. What it's for is for my camera sensor. So when I take my lens off every now and then, I'll turn my camera body upside down so the sensor is facing the ground. Shoot air to the sensor and get whatever dust I have off. So this is a 64 gigabyte card. I carry two 64s. One's always on my camera. One is always in here. In this pocket, I carry a phone charger. The battery life on the a6000 cameras really aren't that great even the a6300 a6500 now the a6400 all of them have terrible battery life because the batteries are so small i have labeled my batteries one through four so if one dies i pop it number two number two dies pop it number three you get the picture i have a camera strap but i never use it i actually hate camera straps carry a lens cloth always just for the lenses and a couple other things i carry with me i have my Joby Gorilla Pod, this is the one I use for my phone. Actually, all the time lapses I've used in my videos come from my phone because my camera does not have a time lapse feature. This is perfect. I used this when I was in New York and got that time lapse of the rest of downtown, like the World Trade Center. I was actually posted up, had both cameras going when I was in the Empire State Building. Would have taken a photo of it, but both my cameras were being occupied. So yeah, if you see me walking around with this backpack in my upcoming videos, this is all the gear I have in there. Please don't rob me. All right, so that's all my camera gear. Like, subscribe so you can see some of my LA videos that are coming up sometime soon whenever I get back from that trip. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Okay, bye, bye, bye.